Okay, so we've added our vendor setup.shell file. So what do we need to do next? Now remember, we had done a lot of research on this phone and we thought it was very similar to another phone. Now that does not mean we can copy and paste everything, but we downloaded um, these uh, different zip files and I've extracted a few of them here. And one of them was this uh, Eureka Black or the Garlic is its code name device. And so we're going to kind of use this device as a way of building our tree. So it's going to kind of direct us into what we want to do. So the very next file that we need after having our vendor set up file is this lineage.make. So we're just going to copy that and we're going to put it in here. So when we um, open this up, we see that uh, you know it has a lot of different things in here. Um, and we are going to start commenting things out, start making changes, and start getting things ready. So first thing we want to do is we're going to make this a to-do. Uh, anytime you make something a to-do, it's going to highlight here in G edit for you as yellow. That's kind of handy because then you can find it really easy. You can search through all your files for your to-dos and then you know that's something you need to do. So we need to add this file, and this file being this one right here. In particular, we don't have that appropriate file in our device. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's save the work that we're doing so far. We need to inherit some common lineage OS Stuff. So this is in the vendor CM config common full phone. That's not going to be in the device tree. That's going to be in the lineage stuff. So that's not something we have to go and, and make sure that uh, we add because that's something that's in lineage itself. So that's fine. Product name. So lineage underscore life one x two. Right. So that's our device. And our vendor is going to be blue because blue makes it. Um, we're going to mark this as a to do. To do. And we're going to call this what is this? Right? Because if we don't know what it is, we don't necessarily need it for that phone. Then we come down here to the bottom and we have, uh, we're going to make this a to do. of update fingerprint. So uh, this is what's used to identify the build fingerprint. Now notice here, he has this build fingerprint for the device and this build description. So how do we get this information for this phone that we're gonna build for that's never been built before, right? Back to our terminal. We are going to uh, ADB devices. Oh, and let me make sure I got my phone set up and ready here. Make sure that we got, got my phone hooked up here. That's fine. So it just showed up here. We don't need to import the photos. Let's try ADB devices again. There we go. So got my phone plugged in, got it all set up for ADB. Uh, if you need help with ADB, again, I have a whole other video series about, about that. So please check those out. We're going to ADB shell, right? And so here we are, we're in the Life 1X2. And if we say get prop, we're gonna get all these properties. Now we're gonna need a lot of properties out of here. So we could just say grep or get specifically fingerprint. And there we go. That's the information we're gonna need here to fill in this block. But we're gonna need a lot of these uh, different, different ones here. So instead what we're gonna do is we're going to put that 
into a file on the SD card called getprop.txt. Okay. Then we're going to exit out of here, and we are going to um, get out of our GitLab folder here, and we're going to adb pull SD card get prop text. So now we have that file right here so we can open it up and work with it. So let's see. GitLab get prop.txt. So we can just copy and paste stuff right out of it. So again, lots of lots of information in here. Uh, really easy to find what you need is just using the you know search function find block. But here we have the build fingerprint. And notice that it looks just like, I'm going to copy this, just like this build fingerprint as far as the style of how it's written. So we're going to paste ours in there. Now we also have this private build description. <clears throat> and it's kind of unusual looking, so we're going to need to find that as well. So let's take a look in here. We'll just find description. And right above our fingerprint, here it was. Notice that it looks very similar, even though the letters are different, it's very similar to the one that we have right here. So we're going to put it inside these quotes. There we go. So now we don't need this to do because we have done it, right? So, great. We now have a working lineage.make file. We still need to fix two more to do's, but we're going to tackle this one in the next video because we have to actually add this um, file. So let's uh, close this right here. And we're going to copy all this stuff. And you wonder why am I copying the extra stuff when I only added one file. But as we go along, we're going to start doing lots of different changes to things. And so it's important to uh, keep updating everything and make sure you grab it all. So CD into that Android. There we go. And we're going to, we see our get status. You don't need to do this every time to get your status if you already know you changed something. But I like to do it. Get commit dash M. Added lineage make file. Then we're going to get push. All right, so now we've got that file uh, going. Uh, next thing we're going to look at is, uh, is the next one that it calls from inside this lineage make file. So we'll see that in the next video.